Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets uh, midday updates on the uh, Tuesday, the 12th of April 2016. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs, especially since spread betting and CFD brokerage, and certainly uh, apply for that potential uh, lucrative 25% cash bonus offer on new trading accounts. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, now let's uh, see exactly where we stand. Now, the uh, uh, from a chronological perspective, U.S. market is certainly flushed overnight, uh, certainly going into the close, given the yen strength and the uh, USD JPY hovering around the 108 or sub 108. It certainly has recovered overnight with the Nikkei up by 1.1%, the Hang Seng up 0.3%, but the Shanghai is, is, is actually closed and negative, so that's a cause for concern. The USD JPY is now back above 108. Let's just bring up the chart of USD JPY because it's all about the yen, folks. So all eyes on the yen and the yen will dictate, obviously, the euro as well. I'll come on to the euro in a second. So for now, the USD JPY is the chart that you must have on your screens. OK, so we uh, like I said, we on a weekly chart, the next potential support level is down below at 106, 104, 105. Uh, for now, the HNS target certainly is in full swing. No. Uh, signs of intervention just yet, okay. Economic data on the docket. Let's have a look uh, into the uh, US session export price index, import price index, inflation numbers, red book, and monthly budget statement. FOMC, Mr. Williams, okay. So, Mr. Williams is going to be interesting. Not only Mr. Williams, we also have speaking today Mr. Harker, uh, Williams, and Lacker as well. So, that should be interesting, okay. Uh, in terms of the dollar guidance now, looking at the USD JPY 60 minute chart certainly has an uptick higher given the uh, given the uh, actual uh, rally in the Nikkei overnight. Certainly some sort of reprieve there. Um, let me just bring up the chart of the Nikkei. Although having said that, just uh, whilst we're here, it certainly seems to be building a base around this 107.6 level. And although you do have resistance at this uh, current level, which is 108.5, so just uh, certainly be uh, cautious of that, okay? And there is this zone here as well at 108.6. So certainly you're facing some resistance. Uh, now, given the fact that uh, we haven't had any major US data or any uh, major uh, statement from a uh, Fed official that will support or, or cause the dollar to rally, uh, at the moment we certainly are found wanting, okay? Now, the other factor to watch here as well is the EURUSD. Let's just bring up the chart of the EURUSD. Let's see exactly where we stand. We have had a, a pivot high of 1.146 1, 1. high. We are now coming into support at this 1.14 level. So this will be interesting. Okay, now, bear with me one second. I just need to uh, put a trade in whilst I'm here. Okay, right, so 1.14 level. So as you can see here now, given the fact that the Euro USD is now coming into this support zone, you will get a bounce in the Euro, which in turn will cause weakness in European equities, okay? So bear that in mind, okay? Now the HNS, mini HNS there. Okay, so the uh, Euro USD, let's just go to a daily chart for now. Uh, daily chart certainly is finding turbulence and resistance at this 1.147, 146. 115 obviously is a level as well to watch out for. Given the fact that we had weaker inflation numbers today out in Germany, that certainly helps the euro short trade, so bear that in mind, okay? And uh, certainly helps the potential QE trade as well and helps exports as well, okay? So that certainly is something to consider. Now, having said that, there's, there has been much documented um, animosity or um, altercation between uh, Mr. Draghi and Mr. Schauble, or Germans, uh, blaming the... Uh, uh, monetary policy of Mr. Draghi for the extremism in their country, and that certainly isn't good news. So any any anti QE backlash, etc., is certainly negative and will cause the Euro USD to move higher. So again, certainly keep an eye out for that as well. That is a con concern. Okay, right. In terms of the markets now, uh, going back to the equity market. So Euro USD, you can see we are now potentially at resistance, which will help the Euro. U Euro stocks, and that's one of the reasons why the Euro stocks is actually moving higher today. Okay. Uh, also, USDJPY, we're watching out that 108 handle, and the US data will be very crucial today. Okay. In terms of uh, economic data from the rest of Europe, let's just quickly go through that for you as well. Like I said, German inflation numbers slightly were lower than expected. Uh, UK retail price or RPI inflation data, basically CPI, IPI, PPI, 
uh, all coming out slightly stronger than expected so therefore that's net net negative for the FTSE 100. We've had the business optimism index coming weaker than expected at the US so far so again that's negative okay. Now in terms of the negative arguments you have uh, uh, UK BRC sales as well retail sales certainly down uh, Greece talks potentially breaking down so that's a cause for concern and as we know Alcoa guidance was certainly weak and the Shanghai index certainly finished weak as well so let's just go to commodities now let's just bring up the chart of copper uh, as you can see copper has a bear flag so consolidating within that and looking to potentially make a new low so that's something that we watch out for and keep a keen eye or keen eye on okay uh, in terms of the four hour chart, let's just bring that up as well. Certainly have bounced off that potential support level, but we do have this diagonal trend line to contend with. And you are now coming into potential turbulence and resistance. OK, bring up the chart of oil. It certainly has been supported given the Kuwaiti uh, production freeze or production stoppage, given concerns there. OK, so but having said that, oil certainly has rallied quite substantially. Uh, and it's very hard to see any further movement higher here, especially given the fact that the dollar index is now coming into resistance. Going to your daily chart on oil, you are now into that FIB 75% resistance. Whether or not we put in a lower high or test that to previous high, that is certainly uh, open to open to question, uh, open to debate as well. Okay, so looking at the dollar index now, let's just see exactly where the dollar is uh, certainly positioned. Bring up the dollar itself. Okay, so the dollar itself on the 60 minute chart certainly has bounced, put in a bottoming tail, and now is starting to reverse, as you can see here. So, potential bottom here now for the dollar index. Again, it will uh, a lot of that will hinge on the inflation data out of the US and uh, obviously information regarding Red Book and um, the Fed speakers as well. But certainly a bottoming uh, formation there on the uh, 60 minute chart. Daily chart again, bottoming tail. You have horizontal support certainly has held. Uh, for the dollar index itself, uh, you do have this pivot low here, though, bear that in mind. Okay, but for now, you have this falling contracting wedge pattern, and it's a classical concept of uh, a breakout. Okay, so classical technical pattern for looking for a potential breakout higher than the dollar index, and that should put a top in the Aussie and the Kiwi as well. Okay, not only a top in the Aussie and the Kiwi, Euro USD as well, but having said that, bear in mind the monetary policy divergence, given the fact that Mr. Draghi has said he's no longer going to cut rates. That certainly is putting a bit under the euro usd and also the uh the actual criticism from germany as well that certainly is going to be hard to justify any further qe or any further rate cuts okay so therefore that's net net euro positive okay for now uh given the fact that uh, we have the dollar uh, index into support looking to potentially break out that certainly is negative for the FTSE 100 now if i bring up the FTSE chart you'll see uh, actually, whilst I'm here, I can bring up the Aussie chart for you as well. This is going to be interesting. Now, I just declare that I am actually short the Aussie. And the reason why I'm short the Aussie is because there's a H&S formation on the daily chart. Okay, looking for a potential move lower. Bringing up the uh, Kiwi chart. Let's just go to uh, <clears throat> daily chart, the Kiwi. And again, the similar type of pattern, H&S formation. So your left shoulder here, uh, you pushed higher. You had a fake out, looking to reverse, going lower. Okay. So dollar index certainly is looking to potentially perk up here and that will send the FTSE 100 lower as well. OK, so that certainly is your bearish setup. And that's one of the reasons why I exited my Euro stocks longs on the fundamental analysis services, the uh, swing trading service. OK, right. Bear with me. Whilst I... OK, so uh, looking at the uh, Kiwi, as you can see here, H&S formation. So the FTSE 100 going over to the going back to the FTSE 100 now. OK, so we're certainly exhausted here, lower lows, lower highs in the 60 minute chart and certainly a case there for a potential H&S reversal. OK, looking at the daily chart, we still have the 200 MA and we have horizontal resistance holding on the uh, FTSE 100, the break of the rising contracting wedge pattern, looking for a break lower. 10 minute chart, the FTSE 100, as you can see, that gap fill level certainly has held and held solidly at that 6206, given the fact that we had stronger retail earnings from ASOS certainly helped the FTSE this morning and obviously the rally in the price of oil. OK, so going back to the FTSE itself, you can potentially expect a pivot low of 6170 to be retested again and that support of 6160 before we attempt to attempt to close a gap at 6130. So bear that in mind. OK, folks, 6130 gap looking to potentially close. OK, right. Going over to the European markets again, it certainly has been helped this morning by that uh, weak inflation number. The IHS formation has failed now, unfortunately, so I'm going to take that away. I did explain that we were going to move, see a move higher 
and that's mainly due to the fact that the euro usd obviously has uh, had an impressive rally okay and we failed to potentially go for that gap fill now the only way we're going to close that gap now is uh, for two two based on two two um, scenarios number one euro usd needs to fall substantially i.e the dollar needs to rally okay and number two the uh, usd jpy obviously needs to rally and certainly move off that 108 level and push higher okay if those two scenarios occur which is obviously all based on the dollar index moving higher then you have a euro stocks rally and you have gap fill if that fails to occur then you know exactly what's going to happen okay so i'm going to get rid of the ihs formation for now because obviously it's failed uh, to a large extent i mean if you take the pivot high from here you can argue that we we've almost have but given the fact that we've dipped below and then rallied back I'm going to ignore that for now. All I can really rely on the fact that we've uh, not put in a lower low. We've put in a higher high. and looking to put in a low, higher low, okay? Before we uh, potentially go for a gap fill, that's uh, 2,960, then obviously you've got 3,000, okay? So certainly all eyes on there, okay? Uh, again, I'll take this uh, diagonal horizontal support zone out for the uh, time being as well, okay? So we're watching that to a particular level. Okay, now the 10 minute chart on the euro stocks again, that horizontal resistance at 2940 is solid. That's one of the reasons why I closed out my swing longs. And now looking at a potential retest of the lows or even the 200 ME at 2910. Okay, uh, let's just connect the lows or here. Uh, we haven't got anything here, so therefore we take the next pivot low, unless we take this pivot low here, which is fine. That works perfect. Okay, so again, looking for 2910 to be tested. Now, 2910, if you get to that zone, that's a zone where I'll potentially close out my shorts and the FTSE and the potential Aussie as well, and then look to potentially switch. Okay, so certainly all eyes on that uh, key level. Right, uh, the um, German DAX now. Let's just bring up the German DAX and let's see exactly where this stands. German DAX, you, you do have two unfilled gaps below on the daily chart, so again, certainly need to remain open to that. The 60-minute chart certainly is finding resistance at previous support equals resistance, so that, again, that's a cause for concern. Obviously, you have the gap there that certainly needs to be checked and needs to be filled. So all eyes on there. OK, uh, but for now, you're you're certainly holding the Fib retracement, which is uh, around the 61 percent as of resistance. OK, it certainly is a cause for concern. Like I said, you need a substantial drop in the euro to really get things going in terms of European equities. OK, uh, you certainly have held that double top resistance. OK, and the market certainly has failed to push any higher. Okay, now in terms of the uh, French CAC, let's bring up the French CAC. Okay, daily chart, putting in a doji candle, indecisive, 60-minute chart, really has been lagging the market, really hasn't it? And the French CAC certainly is a cause for concern. Now, the 10-minute chart, holding that key resistance zone, previous support equals resistance. The gap level, okay, that gap level at 4340 zone, okay, and again, looking to potentially retest those lows from my perspective. You do have an unfilled gap below that needs to close on the French CAC, so that will be a potential target, okay, so bear that in mind. And you have the pivot low here, and you have the pivot low support here, so 4270, 4265, and then obviously eventually gap fill below. So they are the zones that you are looking at in terms of the Euro European stock indices, okay. Right, I think that's a wrap, folks. Uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs, and I'll be doing an end-of-day market video later on. Goodbye now.